one here is the quiz review video for bad debt which is your chapter 9 quiz in Pearson the first method we're going to use for accounting for bad debt is the percent of sales method we're going to do it for a company called Brad Bradley Boots and Bradley Boots had the following transactions at the end of 2019, on December 31st, they estimated bad debt expense as 1% of the $430,000 of credit sales that they did that year. On that same date, December 31st, 2019, they're going to close that entry for bad debt expense. And then during 2020, on January 17th, they're going to sell $900 of inventory to a customer named Rick Rhodes. On June 29th, they're going to deem that that receivable is uncollectible. And then on August 6th, they're going to receive payment for the receivable they just wrote off on June 29th. This happens. Sometimes you think a customer won't pay you, and all of a sudden, out of blue, you get paid. On December 31st, they are going to write off three other accounts as uncollectible. $1,600 from Dusty Johnson, $1,300 from Cody Anderson, and $300 from Darius Ruckert. On December 31st, they're once again going to estimate their bad debt expense as 1% of credit sales, and this year they have $550,000 of credit sales. And then lastly, on December 31st, 2020, they are going to record the closing entry for bad debt expense one more time. Let's go through the journal entries in chronological order as they're listed. On the first one, on December 31st, they are going to estimate bad debt expense for the year as 1% of their $430,000 of credit sales. Well, using the percent of sales method, you add a set percentage of your year's sales to your bad debt expense, assuming that that 1% in this case will never be collected. And because of the gap matching principle, we have to record expenses in the same period as revenues. And doing so under this allowance method is going to put our bad debt expense in the same year that we collected those credit sales and recorded the sales revenue. So we have bad debt expense for how much? 1% of 430000 which is 4300 And because we're not actually writing anything off yet, instead of taking receivables off the books or whatever, we're going to put it into a contra asset, asset account called allowance for bad debt. And that gets credited for $4,300. And allowance for bad debt essentially shows people using your financials what portion of your receivables on your books you don't think you're actually going to collect because no company collects all their receivables. There's just always going to be times when someone doesn't pay. But in this first journal entry, we adjusted our allowance for bad debt to a number that was appropriate, our 1% of credit sales. And then on December 31st of 2019, it's an expense account. It's temporary. We have to close it. Well, we're going to close it just like we close every expense account. If we're using the income summary method, we're going to debit income summary for the amount of the expense. In this case, it's 4300 And we are going to credit bad debt expense to reduce it to zero. For that same 4300 we close our bad debt expense account. Moving on to the 2020 entries. The first one we have is on January 17th. We're going to sell $900 of inventory to Rick Rhodes on account. It's going to be the same as the journal entry. Every time you make a sale on account, it's going to be a debit to accounts receivable, typically a subsidiary account for the customer. So we're going to call this one AR Rhodes for the $900 and we're going to record sales revenue of $900. We sold inventory on account. On June 29th, Mr. Rhodes still has not paid Bradley Boots. So Bradley Boots is going to assume we're never going to see that 900 bucks from Mr. Rhodes. Let's write it off. And when they write it off, they're going to take that money out of that allowance that they have created and set on the books. They expected some of their sales on account to be uncollectible. They're assuming this one is uncollectible. So they're going to take that $900 out of the allowance that they created in order to take Mr. Rhodes receivable off the books. Since receivables are assets and they decrease on the credit side, we're going to credit AR Rhodes for that same 900. We wrote off an uncollectible account. On August 6th, no sooner than we wrote this off as uncollectible, we actually got paid by Mr. Rhodes. Well, this is a problem right now because that receivable, that AR Rhodes account, has a balance of zero on our books right now. We assumed it wasn't going to get paid, so we took it off the books. Well, if it's actually getting paid, we need to have it on the books so that our journal entries work. Uh, so in this case, whenever someone pays 
for an account that was previously written off, the first thing you need to do is put that account back on the book. So we're going to return Mr. Rhodes receivable, which we assume was uncollectible, back to the books by debiting AR Rhodes for 900. And since we were not actually taking the money out of our allowance for bad debt, because it's not really bad debt, let's put that money back in our allowance for bad debt by crediting this Contra Asset account allowance for bad debt for 900. We reversed our bad debt write-off. And now that Mr. Rhodes receivable is back on the books, we can record the standard entry that you always make when someone pays off uh, an account that they owe to you. We're going to debit cash for the amount that we are receiving, which is 900. And we are going to credit AR Rhodes for 900 to take it off the books. And standard entry, we receive payment from a customer on account. On December 31st of 2020, we're going to write off three other accounts as uncollectible. Whenever you write off an account using the allowance method, your debit is always to allowance for bad debt. You're taking the money out of the allowance um, because you already recorded the bad debt expense previously. So to take it out of the allowance, we're going to have 3200 which is the sum of our $1,600 for Mr. Johnson, which is uncollectible. Our $1,300 for Mr. Anderson that is uncollectible. And then $300 for Mr. Ruckert, which is uncollectible. So all three of these receivables have to be reduced to zero because we assume we're never going to see them. So we credited all three of them and we debited allowance for bad debt for the total amount of bad debt that we had when we wrote off these uncollectible accounts. At the end of the year in 2020, we estimated bad debt expense for the year as 1% of our credit sales. And in this year, it was $550,000. we are going to record the same entry that we recorded in 2019. We're going to debit bad debt expense for 1% of $550,000, which is $5,500. And we're going to add that much to our allowance for bad debt. So that gets credited for $5,500. We adjusted our allowance for bad debt. And then when we close our bad debt expense for the period... We're going to debit income summary for that 5500 and we're going to credit bad debt expense for that 5500 to close our bad debt expense account. So with the percent of sales method, there's not like a target that you need to get to. We look at the end of each period and say, all right, this is the amount of credit sales we did. This is the amount of, this is the percentage of those sales we don't think we're ever going to collect. Let's add that much to our allowance so you're constantly filling up your allowance each and every period uh, with more and more money because you're assuming that some of those sales that you made during the year are never going to be collected let's look at what this allowance for bad debt account t looks like right now at the end of 2019 we credited our allowance for 4300 well let's assume that this t account is for our 2020 so we're going to have a beginning balance of 4300 on june 29th we debited it for 900 and then on august 6th when we reversed that write-off we credited it for 900 to add that money back into our allowance on december 31st we debited allowance for bad debt for 3200 when we wrote off those three accounts and then at the end of December, when we made our adjustment, we credited allowance for bad debt for $5,500. Since allowance for bad debt is a contra asset account with a normal credit balance, we add all the credits, subtract our two debits, and we come up with a new balance for allowance for bad debt of $6,600. When we present this on our financials, we're going to present it just like we do every account that has a contra account tied to it. Just like you reported accumulated depreciation, you take your asset account, in this case accounts receivable, and underneath it you subtract the value of your contra asset account. Our allowance for bad debt had $6,600. let us assume we had $137,000 in receivables. Well, that's the gross amount, but we don't expect to collect $6,600 of that, so we should tell users of our financial information that the real net balance of our receivables, the amount we expect to collect from what we have on the books right now, is 130400 Next up is the aging of receivables method. So the percent of sales method is fine, uh, but there is one issue with it, at least for me. It doesn't take into account the credit worthiness of your customers. Some customers are more likely to pay you than others. It also doesn't take into account when during that year 
the sale was made. If you're only making an adjustment at the end of the year, uh, then I would say a receivable that's been standing on your books since, say, February is less likely to be collected than a receivable that happened during Christmas time at the end of December. The longer that a receivable has been on your books, the less likely it is to be collected. And with that principle in mind, that's why I think aging of receivables is the best way to do this. We're going to do it for a company called BMC Bicycles. They're going to begin this period with an AR balance of 145000 and they have a balance in their allowance for bad debt of 3300 During the period, they had the following. They had $4,000 worth of sales on account. We're going to ignore the COGS entry. They collected $389,250 worth of accounts receivable during the period. They have three accounts, which they think are bum, and they're never going to collect on them. $1,300 from John Hoffman, $750 from Oliver Hawk, and $300 from Handlebar Hobby. So they're going to write all of these off. And then at the end of the year, they're going to estimate their bad debt expense for the period using this aging of receivables method. So let's start with the entries again, starting from the top. We did $400 worth of sales on account during the year. Well, what's the entry for that? Let's just assume these are all happening on December 31st when we record them. It means AR is going to get debited for $400,000 and there's sales. So we're going to credit sales revenue for $400,000. And we recorded our credit sales for the period. We're going to ignore the COGS and skip on to the collection of $389,250 worth of receivables. Well, the entry whenever you collect the receivables is always the same. There's a debit to cash for the amount that you collected. And you're going to credit those receivables that take off your books because you're not eligible to receive it anymore. People don't owe it to you anymore. So we recorded collections from customers during the period. Next up, we got to write off this bad debt. And again, we're using the allowance method. It doesn't matter that we change from percent of sales to aging of receivables. There's still all just different methods for creating an allowance for bad debt. And when you write off bad debt using the allowance method, it's always a debit to allowance for bad debt for the sum of all of the accounts that you are writing off. These three accounts are going to total up to 2,350. We wrote off a receivable from Mr. Hoffman for 1,300. A receivable from Mr. Hawk for 750 and a receivable from Handlebar Hobbies for 300 And we have to reduce all those receivables to zero because we don't think we're going to collect them. We're not going to receive anything. We can't have the asset on our books. Uh, and to reduce the value of any receivable, you credit it. And we wrote off our uncollectible accounts. So now, here at the end of the period, we need to make an adjustment for our allowance for bad debt. And using this method, the main principle is that receivables that have been outstanding on your books for a longer period of time are much less likely to be collected. So BMC Bicycles is believing that about 3.3% of receivables that have been outstanding for less than 30 days will never be collected. If a receivable has been on your books for 31 to 60 days, there's a 3% change you're never going to see it. And then if that receivable has been on your books for 61 to 90 days, that becomes a big jump. And they think there's a 30% chance you're never going to collect that receivable. And for 91 to 120 days, that jumps to 35%. So what we're going to do is use the amount of receivables we have outstanding during each period times this estimated percentage of uncollectability to come up with the portion of each time frame's receivables that they estimate are going to be bad debt and by doing this we can come up with a target balance for our allowance account so let's start with under 30 days we have hundred and three thousand dollars worth of receivables we think 0.3 percent of those will never be collected well that's going to math out the 309 dollars of those receivables we think we're never going to see same concept for 31 to 60 days. If we think 3% of those $35,000 in receivables are going to be uncollectible, we're going to have bad debt of $1,050. If we think 30% of our $13,000 worth of receivables that have been on our books for 61 to 90 days will never be collected, well, that means we're not going to see $3,900 of that. And if we think 35% of our receivables, which are on our books for 91 to 120 days, are not going to be collected, well, we're not going to see that $2,400 because we think $840 of it will never be collected. And then if we add up our estimated bad debt for each time period, we're going to get our estimated overall bad debt, which I refer to as the target balance. So 309 plus 1,050 plus 3,900 plus 840 means 
the target balance for our allowance for bad debt account is going to be six thousand and ninety nine dollars well what is the current balance of our allowance for bad debt information tells us that we started the period with a balance of thirty three hundred and allowance for bad debt as a contra asset is going to have a credit balance so let's say it has a beginning balance of thirty three hundred we wrote off three bad accounts our account from mr hoffman mr hawk and handlebar hobbies and in total we wrote off $2,350 worth of bad debt and we took it out of our allowance and when you take stuff out of your allowance you have to debit your allowance for bad debt account to reduce it so right now uh, a little quick math tells me we have $950 remaining in our balance well we just computed using this aging of receivables method that our target balance at the end has to be $6,099 so what number do I need to throw into this T to make its balance 6,099 bucks? It's going to need a credit for 5,149. So with the aging of receivables method, you don't just come up with a number and throw that number into your allowance. In this method, the number that you come up with when we got to that 6,099, that's your target. And you need to figure out what you already have in the allowance for bad debt, uh, in order to increase it to that target so basically what i'm saying is you only record bad debt expense for the difference between what is remaining in your allowance before you make the adjustment and what target you have to get to in this case it was at five thousand one hundred and forty nine dollars so when we make our adjusting entry at the end of the period we're going to record bad debt expense for the difference between what our current balance was and what our target balance was that's the five thousand one hundred and forty nine and we're going to add that amount like we just did in our t account to our allowance for bad debt. We adjusted our bad debt allowance to its target balance. Best of luck on your quiz, everybody.